Hey everybody, I'm Tony. I'm Candy. And we are from the Music Room. That's our online home for all things music. And we are so excited to have you here and to welcome you to the free From Fan to Music Journalist webinar. Yes, very excited. <laughs> all right. Uh, so the, like we said, the Music Room is our online home. Uh, we started it back in 2013 and here it is 2021 and we have learned so much over the course of these years. Yes, we've made tons of mistakes and learned so many lessons. Yeah, for and, sure. Yeah, we want to help you guys right. not make the same mistakes. We only wish that like, you know, there had been something like this back when we first got started to maybe help us avoid some of those pitfalls and mistakes that we made. But that's not to say that we haven't got to do some really cool stuff along the way. Very cool stuff. That's right. So, here's a brief overview of what we're going to go into today. Okay. So we will be teaching you in this webinar, what is music journalism? We'll give you the definition and help you figure out why you are qualified. You're gonna be choosing a niche. We're gonna tell you what's a niche and why you need one. Types of outlets, that's basically where you're gonna present your information. Types of mediums, that's how you're gonna present your information. And then we're gonna discuss the equipment that you're gonna to need to get started and why you don't need to break the bank to get started. Then we're going to go into pitching, which is the good stuff, learning about how to get the things that you want. Uh, we'll go into approvals and rejections and how to handle both of those, and then offer some tips to get started. All right, so we know what you're probably thinking. There hasn't been live music since March of 2020. Uh, COVID has definitely put a, a hit on the concert industry, and most stages have been black and bare, uh, again, since March. But... We are fully expected, hopeful, and ready for live music to return. It's coming. I promise it's coming. We're probably looking here just a matter of months before the bands start going back out on tour. The way you have to look at this is, every band has been in the same situation right now. They've been sitting at home. They have been... Like us. Yeah, they've been sitting at home <laughs> like us. And as much as we want to go out and hear live music and experience live music, they want to go out and play live music. And they also want to go out and make some money. So, when the floodgates open, just about every band imaginable is going to hit the road. Yeah. And that makes, right now, the prime time to become a music journalist. Bands are going to need us more now than ever. Before they could pick and choose, they had, you know, you had bands going out at different times. The competition wasn't as steep, but right now, they're going to need every influencer they can possibly get their hands on. Right. That's where you come into play. So whether you've been doing this for eight years or whether you know you're just getting started, you are going to be very important to the bands in the music industry. So that's why the things that we're teaching you now are so important to implement. You know, before all this starts happening, you can learn it all now and get prepared. So then, when music starts again, live music, you'll be ready. That's right. So we're going to show you how you are going to be a band's best friend when they hit the road. So. Let's get into it. Yay. All right. <laughs> All right. So before we get into the material, we want to give you a little background about ourselves and what makes us qualified to share this information with you, right? Um, well, first off, we are huge music fans. Um, yeah. Any, for, any kind of music. Yeah. From Andre Bocelli to Metallica. Yeah. We <laughs> love it all. And I know I started going to shows at a really young age and uh, it just became, I became obsessed with music, all things music, concerts. Uh, CDs, albums, I went through everything. I did it all. I started with albums, I moved to cassettes, went to CDs, and now I'm back at albums yeah. and, and concerts. I mean, concerts are such a huge part of our life. Yeah. I'd say every year we probably average at least 10 shows a year. Oh, more, probably. Probably. I mean, we, we will travel to go see shows, you know. Yeah. Um, music festivals. Yeah, music festivals, you name it. It's just been such a huge part of our life. Um, now, along the way, of course, in high school and things like that, I played in, in bands, but um, I knew right away that I was never going to be a rock star, right? That was not going to be my ambition. I was not moving to California to, uh, to live my dream. I knew that was not me. Um, but I, I had the craving to be a part of, that, of the music industry, I guess, as you would say. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that I could do was write. Uh, in high school, I took journalism. And I wrote for the school paper, did album reviews and things like that. And then it just kind of hit me. I said, well, maybe I'll, I'll start a, a blog. I'd heard that term before. I said, maybe I'll start a blog and just write about the music that I love. And it was 
nothing more than just sharing my opinions on music and all things music to make me feel better about myself like I was actually doing something with music. Yeah. So that's what we did. We started a blog. We figured it out. It wasn't easy, but we figured it out. <laughs> and, and that's where The Music Room was born. Uh, it was an online blog, themusicroom.me, because uh, com was already taken. Uh, so we started that, and it's just opinion pieces, plain and simple, what I was thinking about music. And I'll never forget, one day I was at a Dropkick Murphy show, and I was posting on Facebook before the show, like, hey, you know, I'm looking forward to Dropkick Murphy's. And a friend of mine asked me, he goes, hey, man, are you, are you covering the show tonight for the music room? And I was like, no, I don't do that. And he said, well, well why not? I, I don't do that. They're, they're a real band. You know, I just bought a ticket. I'm going to the show. And then he asked me the most important question that changed everything. He said, well, did you ask? Well, no, I didn't ask. I just assumed. So that got me thinking, well, maybe I'll start asking to cover some stuff. And you know what? I started asking, and eventually somebody said yes. And then you were scared. <laughs> I was terrified. I was so happy for us. I'm <laughs> jumping up and down like, oh, I get to do this, I get to do this. And then I'm like, oh, no, how do I do this? What am I going to do? What am I going to say? It was an interview at the time with a, a guy named Tom Kiefer of Cinderella and grew up listening to Cinderella. That was my, my first big hard rock concert and like, I was terrified. I'm, I'm going to talk to this guy. What am I going to say to him? What am I going to ask him? And, um, you know, we figured it out. And I'm sure that if you went back and listened to that interview, it may sound a little rough. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we've learned some stuff over the years. Um, but that one yes led to more questions. It, it, it went to asking for more. And one of the questions we asked for were to... Um, review a local music festival in town called Bunbury here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And again, we got a very surprising yes. So, but that led to something else. With the review tickets for the weekend, we also got a photo pass. We had never been in a concert photo pit before a day in our lives. We'd never shot a concert past our iPhones, holding up in the air, being those people. <laughs> But again, we've got a photo pass, so we're just going to do it. Now, luckily, we had a Nikon DSLR camera, but it was definitely not like the high-end ones that you see most people with a photo pit having. But you know what? We went in there and did it. I, Candy went in. She was first in the pit. and uh, <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah, Fall Out Boy. I remember she got done shooting Fall Out Boy, the first like, big band, and came out grinning ear to ear. I mean, can, what was that experience like for you? It was so much fun. Uh, like, I still remember it. Yeah. You know, it was so long ago, but I still remember it. Yeah. It's it, and I remember we posted a picture of one of the band members on Twitter, and he liked it and retweeted it. Yeah. And we were like, oh my gosh, he retweeted our picture. And it was it was the best feeling. Yeah, it was all new to us. It was so exciting. It was a rush. You know, were our pictures at that time, you know, right up there with what you see right now? Probably not, you know. But for us, right. they were... For us, they were great. That was our first round, and we learned so much, and then we wanted that next photo pass, and we wanted those next review tickets, and it led us to become better, and it led us to ask questions to people that were already doing it, people that we saw in the photo pit that weekend, and people that we saw writing reviews and things like that. So we started asking questions, and luckily, we, we have a lot of great people in the area that shared information with us. So we would take that information, and we would grow in the next concert, or the next festival, we were that much prepared for it. The next interview, it wasn't quite as nervous. Right. You know, so um, again, we just, we learn through opportunity and through some fears even of learning them, you know. Um, and just over the years, every with every interview, with every photo pass, with every review ticket that we've received, we've, we've just learned to do things a little better. Right. Yeah. Made a lot of mistakes. Sure. Learned a lot. Yeah. Of those mistakes. Yeah. You know, there were some things that I didn't know we'd bounce back from, and we did, and we were better for it. Uh, we've been pretty good at not repeating the same mistakes twice, um, but yeah. all we can say is that what we've been able to do is so far surpassed what it was when we first started the music room. Um, dreams come true. Uh, I, I, it sounds cliche, but it's true because, you know, I'll just tell you right now, I'm a huge Aerosmith fan. It's always been my band, 
Anybody who knows me will know that I've been obsessed with Aerosmith since I was 13 years old. Our first dance at our wedding was Aerosmith, Don't Want to Miss Thing. Yeah, it's an important band to us. And I'll just tell you that uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, not too long ago, on a red carpet, Steven Tyler uh, was a featured artist. He was premiering a documentary, and um, we were on the red carpet. Candy was taking photos because I was too just un in disbelief about what was going on. There was Steven, and I was just in a role I was going to sit and watch. I was going to soak it all in. Candy was taking the pictures, and we were good. And the publicist came up to me and said, okay, you have two questions. And I, I had two questions with who? You have two questions with Steven Tyler. <sighs> Man. <laughs> so there I was on a red carpet in Nashville, Tennessee with Steven Tyler for, it might have lasted for 20 seconds, but I was there and I asked Steven Tyler two questions. If I'd ever do anything else in music again, that, that would be enough. But uh, I'm telling you guys, um, it is possible to go out and do these things. Now, you have to have some skills, you have to have some knowledge, and that's what we're going to try to uh, share with you all during this next uh, few minutes that we have together. So, I think enough about us. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to show you some pictures and yeah. some stuff we've done. Yeah, we'll, we'll show you the things that we've done, just again, to let you guys know that we have been there and, you know, we have uh, had these experiences. So let's go on. Let's look at some of these memories, some of these things that we've done, and uh, we'll share them with you right now. Yeah, here they are. Right, here you go. Okay, so here we are outside the media trailer at Bunbury Music Festival. We've covered that one three or four times. That's always a good time. Okay, this was a fun one. This was at the Louder Than Life Music Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. I got to interview Ed Rowland of Collective Soul back in the media area. Very cool interview. And here we are at the Sonic Temple Music Festival. You might remember it as Rock on the Range in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we got to experience the VIP experience the whole weekend. That was a lot of fun. This one here is really unique. We got an invitation to attend an album release party in Nashville, Tennessee. This is me outside the BMI building on Music Row. Uh, I went in, it was like a big party. They had uh, interviews with some of the artists on the, the album and a lot of the industry types. This one was really, really cool. Here we are at the Nashville Film Festival. We got to interview Steven Tyler, Brian Head Welch from Korn. Uh, this was a film festival for some documentaries like uh, Leonard Skinner and Steven Tyler. Uh, there were a lot of films there. It was a lot of, a lot of fun. And here's just a shot of me in the photo pit that Candy caught. Um, this is one of the best things about, about this is being there, shooting the artist, being up close and personal like this. Just awesome every time. And this is just an example of one of the many, many photo passes that we've obtained over the years. Uh, it's always great when you get to your show and they give you the photo pass and, and the ticket. And uh, it's just something we hang on to as a souvenir and a memory of that show and that experience. So what we have planned to talk about today is basically going to be an overview of how to make the leap from fan to music journalist. Very brief overview. Right. It's a lot of information. So stay tuned at the end of this webinar and you feel like this is for you and you want to plug in. We have a really special deal for you on our premium course. Yeah, our premium course is a four-week course where we go into depth about everything that we're going over today. Yeah. How to do everything, like every little detail you would need to know to be able to start doing this for yourself. Yeah, actual items that will help you take that leap. Seriously, going from a fan to a music journalist. So, you know, if that's for you, stay tuned. we got something really cool for you here in a little bit. But for now... Let's get learning. Yeah, here we go. All right. Okay, so what we're about to teach you are just things that we've learned over the years. It's certainly not the only way to do things, and other people may do them differently, and that's okay. These are just what we've learned over the years. Okay, we're all here because we want to be music journalists, but what is music journalism? So basically, music journalism is using your influence to inform and entertain an audience on music-related topics. Music journalism can be in the form of reviews, interviews, photos, etc. The information can be delivered through several different types of mediums. Alright, 
So what makes you qualified to be a music journalist? I mean, quite simply, if you love music, you're qualified. And chances are, if you're taking this webinar, you're qualified. But to put it in a little bit more sophisticated terms, there is a formula that we use. If you have an opinion, you have an outlet, and you have an audience, you have influence. You probably are already influencing people's music decisions by your Facebook posts, t-shirts you wear, conversations you have. You may not even know it. Right. And music journalism is just that on a bigger scale. Now, don't be intimidated by that word influencer. That's something you're going to hear. That's why we stick to music journalists. But basically, everybody has an opinion. Um, that is undeniable. But it's just finding the right outlet to express that opinion to reach an audience. And that's what we're going to talk about more here in the future slides. All right, so one of the first things you're going to want to do as a music journalist is choose your niche. A niche is basically a fancy way of saying what you specialize in. An example of a niche would be rock and roll. Now, that's a very broad subject. What type of rock and roll are you going to cover? Classic rock, heavy metal, progressive rock, Christian rock, alternative rock? You get the point. But the more you break it down and make it specific, you're going to find your niche. And your niche can be as broad or as specific as you want to make it, but just make sure that you're consistent. You don't want to have a bunch of posts or photos with classic rock, and then all of a sudden you switch and you have something on classical music. People would be confused over what you cover, so you just want to be consistent. And you want to remember, the more broad that your niche is, the more work you have cut out for you. Now, you can always change or grow your niche as you go along. When the music room first started out, we focused really heavy on old 80s hard rock. Um, that was all of the kind of stuff we covered. But as we started to grow, we realized that we wanted to increase our audience and increase our material. Now, when you do something like this, you can't just do it overnight. you got to kind of do it gradually and ease into it. Um, but first, focus on what you're doing. Establish yourself as an expert. And then once you're there, you can grow. Okay, so by now you've already heard us use the word outlet a few times already. So let's define what an outlet is. So basically an outlet is a publication or broadcast program that provides news and feature stories to the public through various distribution channels. Now there are two types of outlets. The first one is existing. This would be like a magazine, a radio station, an existing blog. Now an advantage of going with an existing outlet is they already have an audience so you don't have to grow your own. A disadvantage could be some of the more popular shows that come up you have more competition because more people want to do those. The other type of outlet is creating your own. Now this one also has a lot of benefits and a lot of disadvantages. We decided to grow our own with the music room. Now, I must tell you, it takes a lot of time to actually develop your platform. Uh, for us, it was a blog, and it was learning WordPress, and learning how to build a blog, and then it was growing the audience, and then it was building a resume enough to start getting the more popular shows. But on the other side of things, we got to make it exactly how we want it. And when a big show comes along, we get to cover it. We don't have to be in competition with anybody else. And at the end of the day, we're the ones that are getting the recognition for the work that we're putting in. So as you can see, both types of outlets have their pros and cons for sure. You just need to look at yourself, see what kind of time you have available, and what it is that you want to do, and decide which one works best for you. And now we're going to talk about the types of mediums. So what is a medium? A medium is the way that you present your information. Right, there's a lot of different types of uh, mediums, and here are a few of the types. Um, so a blog is a very popular medium. Uh, this is basically kind of like your own website where you share your content. A blog is perfect for a person that's a really strong writer, but maybe doesn't feel comfortable being in front of a video or other things like that. So you can use your blog to share your information. Now maybe if you're a person that doesn't necessarily like to write and feel really comfortable being on a video, you can do a vlog. That's basically a video blog. You film your content and upload it either to your website, to YouTube, uh, other forms of social media, uh, anywhere you can post video, you share your vlog. 
and you can also do photography. We talked about how we've taken photos like at music festivals, film festivals, concerts. You can do that and you can post your photos pretty much anywhere. You can have a website if you want or Instagram is really popular for posting photos. Another type of medium is a podcast. This is basically an audio form of sharing your information. You can do interviews, reviews, you can have like a news format. We currently don't have a podcast. That's something that we would like to do in the future. Social media is another powerful medium, but we should mention that we don't recommend having social media as your only medium. Things can happen with accounts, um, platforms can go away. We've actually had instances where social media accounts have gotten frozen for no reason. So then all of your work is gone. So we recommend using social media to enhance your other medium, such as a website or photography. So when it comes to mediums, you may find that you're going to have more than one. You may have several on this list. We certainly do. Because the more mediums that you do have, the more work you're going to have to do. We recommend getting started with one, maybe two, and as you grow that medium, you can always expand yourself and try new things. That's what we've done over the course of the past few years. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about equipment. Um, to get started, you're, you're definitely going to need equipment. Um, and one of the things we want to urge you guys is don't feel like you have to run out and spend a bunch of money on stuff. Um, you know, in, in cases where you can, use what you have. Uh, a great example of this is a blogger. I think most of us all have that cell phone that has a camera that records video. I mean, that's a great way to get started. Use your phone, make sure you're checking the settings and getting the best quality you can get, but record those videos on your phone. You can always upgrade later. Now, if you decide that there is something that you need or want to buy, you can always look for used equipment. The thing about this field is people are always looking for the latest and greatest thing and then they'll sell last year's model so you can get lots of great deals on great used equipment. But hey, if you have the money and want to go out and buy the latest and greatest thing, that's totally up to you. And now some equipment is going to be essential. For example, a photographer is going to need a DSLR camera. You can't go down to a photo pit and take pictures with your phone or with a point and shoot. That's just not professional and they're not going to let you do it. You would get kicked out. So when we started, we had a DSLR camera, but it definitely wasn't the best. And, you know, eventually we were able to upgrade. So like Tony said, just use what you can, buy used if you need to, and eventually you can upgrade like we did. All right, so now we're going to talk about pitching. Pitching is basically a formal request for coverage opportunities. It's that easy. It's, it's asking for what you want. Now, it sounds pretty easy, but there is certainly an art to pitching. You make your pitch to a publicist who works for the band or company. And a lot of times the hard work is actually finding the correct person to pitch to. So once you do that, you need to know exactly how to ask for what it is that you want. Now a lot of times these PR people are talking to a lot of people every day, so you have to get their attention let them know you're professional and make your request all in a nice tight package. And these are some examples of things that you can pitch for. Now this is not an all-inclusive list. There are tons of things that you can request. Uh, music releases, albums, vinyls, downloads, photo or video passes, and we should say that those are two separate things. Just because you got approved for a photo pass does not mean you're allowed to take video. It's very important that you know the difference. Review tickets, interviews, books, and other products. Okay, so once you start making those pitches, the next thing you're going to be dealing with is approvals and rejections. And they, they're going to happen. And knowing how to handle the no's is just as important as knowing how to handle the yeses. We still get rejected even after doing this for eight years. I sure do. You never know unless you ask. There have been shows that we've requested, we thought for sure we would get approved, and we didn't. And then there have been other things that we thought, there's no way we're going to get approved for this. And then we did. So it doesn't hurt to ask. All they can do is say no. Right. Remember the story I told when we first started this webinar about being at a Dropkick Murphy show and my buddy asking me if we were covering it, and I said no? It's just because I didn't ask. 
You know, a few years later, I found myself in the photo pit of the Dropkick Murphy shows taking pictures because I asked. So once you get started on your journey to being a music journalist, you can make this be whatever you want it to be. If you just want it to be a hobby, you can do that. If you want to work part-time, you can do that. If you want it to be a full-time career, you can do that too. However much work you put into it is how much you're going to get out of it. You may need to buy music or concert tickets at first in order to build your portfolio. For example, if you apply to shoot a show and you don't get approved, you can still buy tickets for the show and write a review, send it to the publicist, and that way you'll stand out next time you ask. A lot of these publicists cover lots of different artists, so you may not have gotten approved for this one, but they may remember you that you sent them something anyway and approve you for somebody else. And don't overlook lesser known bands. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for this, um, but all the big name bands right now were lesser known bands at one time or another. Catch them on their way up. They'll remember you. They remember that you worked with them when they got started, and they're likely to keep working with you when they become the big band. Also, lesser known bands sometimes get that opening slots for the bigger bands, and uh, they can get you in and get you access to a show. A perfect example of this was a band called JD and the Short Shot. Now, I had never heard of this band, but they reached out and said, hey, would you guys cover our show? Oh yeah, they just happened to be opening up for the Eagles, by the way. So we got to cover the Eagles, thanks to JD and the Short Shot. And finally, you should always remain a fan, but be professional while you're working. Um, you know, this is a job, and you have a reputation to maintain, so act like you've been there before. All right, there it is. Uh, that's a lot of information, or it seems like a lot of information, uh, but really, that's just scratching the surface. Yeah, very brief overview. Yeah, that's just kind of letting you know uh, what's involved, and, and now it's just a matter of whether or not you feel like this is something for you. Um, hopefully, you're excited, and you're thinking, wow, I could do all this stuff. You know, I want to do all this stuff, yeah. and uh, I think you can, too. Yeah, if we can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, it really, it's just a matter of putting the work in. But you know, if you are excited and you, you are feeling like, this is me, I want to learn more, I want to do this, then we want to invite you guys to come and take our, our premium course uh, and, and to learn not only, you know, the things involved, but to actually take actual steps to become a music journalist. Like we said before, it's a four-week course. We go into depth about how to do each thing. First, you build a foundation. You know, what outlet do you use? What medium? Uh, we teach you how to do the pitching for all these things. Right. Pitching for interviews, photo passes, festival tickets. Uh, we even have examples of how to do it. Yeah. And, and we also, we, we're going to go a step further. When you do start getting those yeses, uh, like you remember what we said earlier on when we started getting approved, we were very... Uh, we were very happy, but we also we had a lot of fears, a lot of anxiety. We're going to like walk you guys through the approval process. Like when you are in a photo pit, we're going to tell you what that's like and what you need to do to be prepared for that. Yeah. What what to do when you get approved for those interviews. We're going to walk with you guys through the whole process, from building the foundation to getting those approvals and, and, and actually doing it. Right, and telling you what not to do. That's right. just as important as what you need to do. We're going to build a community here of... of music journalists who are going to support each other, help each other, celebrate each other, and we hope that you are here for the journey with us. So our premium course is normally $297, but right now we're having a special, it's $197, so you're going to save $100. Right, but let us just give you a little food for thought, okay? Okay, so we consulted Google to see what the average concert ticket price was in 2019. Two tickets at the average price, get in the door prices, is $192. And a t-shirt, I mean, you have to get a t-shirt if you go to a concert, is $40. And that's just your standard short sleeve shirt. I mean, if we look at long sleeve, if we look at hoodie, if we look at the hat, the tour program, all that stuff, you're looking at at least 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. All right, and then we're going to get into drinks. So if each person has one drink at the show, and let's face it, that's probably figuring kind of low, 20 bucks easy. Oh, yeah. And food, too. One trip for two people to the food stand, $30, that's low, too. So being kind of liberal with our prices, 
you're looking at $282 for one night out at a concert for two people. That's almost $100 more than what our course cost. That's right. Okay, and how about the average festival cost? One weekend pass, we figure $400. That doesn't include anything extra like VIP or, you know, that could be thousands of dollars. Right, that's a general admission weekend pass. And if you're looking at something like Coachella or Stagecoach, you're going to up that number. This is just basically an average. And then we gotta get the we got to get the merch. So the one short sleeve black t-shirt, you know, they got to be black, $40. And you know, all those bands, you're not going to get one shirt. Nope, I never have. So you figure if you get one drink per day for those three days, and I mean all day, you're going to get more than one drink. But again, we're throwing out conservative numbers. You're looking at $30 for the whole weekend. Right. And that's probably bottled water alone because you need to stay hydrated during the festivals. And then we got to eat. And with all the food trucks that they have at these festivals and all the different options, and none of them are cheap. So if you look at one meal a day over the course of three days, and again, I think we're all going to eat probably more than one meal, 60 bucks easy on food. That's a total of $530 for a weekend festival. That's over $300 more than our premium course of $197. So guys, if you're music lovers like us, you need to invest in yourself. Get this course right now, especially when it's at the price of $197. It's such a good deal. Even at the normal price of $297, you're still spending less than you would for one weekend festival. That's right, guys. Like We laid it out here for you. You're going to go out to one concert and spend almost $200. You're going to take this course for less than that and learn how to get into many shows for free. So it's a win-win. Like Candy said, now is the time to invest in yourself. Okay, so why should you take the From Fan to Music Journalist premium course? We've already outlined, you could save on concert costs. Now we're not saying we're gonna get your free merch and food and drinks, but what if you didn't have the cost of a concert ticket? Think of how much that would free up for you for the merch, drinks, and food, or, or to put towards your, your outlet for the equipment you would need. Uh, also, same thing with festival costs. One festival, $400, you don't have to pay it. Isn't that amazing? And think about when you've been in a show and you've seen the, the photographers being escorted to the photo pit, and you think, man, that would be so cool. I could do that. Well, you know what? You could do that. So we're going to teach you how to request those media credentials for yourself. And you want to get your voice heard. Like we said before, you're probably already influencing people by what you say on Facebook, your conversations you have, your t-shirts. Now you'll have more of an outlet to get that out there and build your influence. You'll have more of an audience. And the best reason I can give you is over the past eight years of doing this, we have had some amazing experiences and have created some just awesome memories that we'll never forget. And we want that for you guys too. So here it is, the From Fan to Music Journalist Premium Course. Like we said before, it's a four-week course. We go in-depth, lots of information. Yeah, what you got in this webinar, this, this is an outline, this is an overview. Like in the course, these four weeks, we're getting down and specific on each medium. Blogging, vlogging, podcasting, you name it, we're getting into it. Right. And there's examples, like the pitching. We give you an actual example that we use to make a pitch. Right. We're going to show you how to be taken seriously by the publicist that you're reaching out to. Right. And usually this course is $297, but right now, for a limited time, we're selling it for $197. Yeah, so that's $100 savings right here. And like we talked about before, you're going to go to a concert. You're going to spend at least $100 more. Uh, and that's, like I said, that's a real conservative price. So guys... Invest in yourself and just think of the really cool things that you're going to be able to get to do by the material, the tools that you're going to get out of this, this course. So here are some frequently asked questions. Uh, refund policy. Yes, we have a refund policy. It's 14 days after the date of purchase. So if you get halfway through the class and for whatever reason you're not happy, uh, you get a full refund. And, uh, you know, we realize that the materials in the class, it's going to maybe take longer than four weeks to cover. Uh, you're going to have access to this class for at least two years. So it'll be there for you to go back to, to use as a tool. And we also have a payment plan for the class. Like we realize $197 may be a lot for some people. 
So you can also do three monthly payments of $75 each. All right, and to contact us if you have any questions or you just want to reach out, feel free to email at tony at the music room dot me. Right, and if you want to get a better idea about us and what we do with the music room, uh, by all means, please check us out. Uh, our website is the music room dot me. We are the music room me on Facebook and on Instagram as well at the music room me. And you can also check out our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com, the music room live. And you can kind of see the things that we've done, what we're continuing to do at the music room. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us here today for the Fan to Music Journalist free webinar. Yes, we know your time is very important, so thank you so much yeah, for watching. Definitely, thank you. And we hope that you got some, some good information out of the, out of the webinar, uh, maybe gave you some things to think about, and make you realize that, hey, you can do this too. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to begin a couple emails from us. They'll have the link to our premium course if you, you know, choose to take it. That's great. Yeah. And if you can't wait, like you just want to jump in, you want to do this thing like now, you're ready to go, <laughs> go over to the music room. It's the music room dot me. And there will be a link there where you can click and just sign up and get started today. Right. Yeah. Okay. But no matter what, we just appreciate you guys being here with us today. And uh, we know we hope we see you at, a, at least at a concert sometime in the future. Yes. Yeah, um, you know, if you see this t-shirt or something, come introduce yourself. Uh, let us know that you did the webinar with us. And even better, we hope we see you guys in the photo pits. Yes. We hope we see you at the music festivals. And um, we look forward to, to hearing all about your experiences. Yes. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much. Hope to talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.